Hey, kittens, it's that time. Are you ready? Because we are. Mm. For those of you that don't know, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, the show where we talk about the show that people love and love to hate. Mm. You know. uh, for those of you that aren't aware, we have two fabulous co-hosts. I happen to be Gary, and with me is... It's Damon. Hello and welcome. And it happens to be Sunday, March 6th of 2022. We are in season 14. Uh-huh. Because we're it's old, baby. Uh, and we are now going to review, uh, rule you, episode 7, 8, and 9 of season 14, which was, let me go back to the titles, The Daytona Wind. You're welcome. I didn't put any fart sounds in. Uh, girl Groups and Menses. Is. 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 Mm -hmm. uh so yeah let's uh jump into our first topic of discussion shall we racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win all right so put the pedal to the metal uh Miss Thing and I are going to discuss our overall thoughts. Any serves, swerves, or nerves that happen to occur in these particular episodes. Damon, mm -hmm. what did you think amongst the three? Um, if, the, if you have any specific recollections. Sure. Um, so I wrote down, they're coming out. And um, mm -hmm. it's kind of a very interesting you know development interesting um, plot point not plot point but interesting kind of situation that we're dealing with um we knew carrie and cornbread were were trans before you know the show kind of like aired mm -hmm. but since the show has been airing mm -hmm. three additional queens have come out as trans um bosco jasmine kennedy and now Willow Pill. Um, and I just think that's great. It's mm -hmm. so wonderful to to see these, these people be more comfortable with themselves and realize, you know, and learn learning more about themselves even through the show and outside of the show. Um, Jasmine in particular came out during the show. Right. In in Untucked. In Untucked. Uh, she had a a, a breakdown if you yeah will, um and came out uh in the in that episode um yeah. you know giving giving a lot of um i don't know if i want to say honor but recognition yeah. to carrie mm -hmm. for who she is and yeah. feeling that that really you know kind of um gave her some you know comfort yes it gave her comfort it gave her the 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 um I want to say bravery to to reveal herself. Mm -hmm. So it's just been rather amazing seeing that. And I mean, it took you know it took a while, but we're here now where not only are the queens comfortable being transgender on the show, but also in coming out, you know, during while it's recording. Mm -hmm. um, whereas we know that wasn't always the case, especially in the beginning. Um, so props to them. Um, I'm so proud of them and I hope that they, um, all do well in wherever they go, mm -hmm. you know, with this, you know, life, um, Willow in particular, it, it, she has advised that this is where she's at for now. And she knows that that's not necessarily, that may not always, that may not be mm -hmm. the place in the future. Right. I really appreciated that she said, I see, I identify as trans. I consider myself trans femme. Um, I think she chose she there or she, she they, they. Mm -hmm. as like the as pronoun reference, but was saying like, this is a very fluid dynamic. And I thought it had something so poignant to say about <laughs> in the space of recording the season. I mm -hmm. felt very comfortable, like amongst kin. Yeah. Like this is this is the chosen family kind of thing. But also I thought that was revealing because I was like, right, and then you leave. Yeah. Like, and then you go back to your regular life where you don't have your sisters, quote unquote, with you to 
be supportive and to, you know, lean on. So mm-hmm. if you come from an environment where you may not have that, um, you know, that kind of support system, I could see where this could really um, be a bit of a, of a, you know, an, an unintended ride, you know, mm-hmm. uh, psychologically and emotionally, even spiritually. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So kudos to them. Great for them. So th- at this rate, if it keeps going, I mean, what we had, uh, what, 14 Queens on here. <laughs> if we get two more, we got a half a season. So <laughs> just, you know, yeah. I, th- I, I don't be... expect anybody else to, I mean, I, I, I don't either, but who knows? I mean, who knows? Um, and then kind of to kind of bring it back to reality just a little bit. Um, I just have to comment on this because I I feel it is, it is important. So we've, we, you know, we've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're doing this kind of three episode kind of, you know, rankings and, uh, in the three episodes that we're talking about this, this episode, this particular episode, um, we've only lost a queen. Right. So let's so, talk about that for just a second, right? Longest <laughs> season ever. No, it's not the longest season ever. No, there was one where we had 22 episodes, I think, or at least it felt yeah. that way. Because, girl, God. I was so done and exhausted <laughs> by the time we reached, what was it, 12? Whichever Something. one. I think, well, and what it was is we did All Stars and then we went into regular season and it was like a half a year. So, yes, yes. Um, so that felt like the longest season ever. But no, 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 you're, you're not mistaken because even I had to go back and kind of review and be like, wait, what happened at seven? What happened at eight? Like, mm-hmm. and here we are. And only yeah. one queen went home in three episodes. Yep. So, for those that don't know, really quick recap. So, season se- so episode seven. Was the episode Daytona win, which was um, uh, they had the they had the challenge of like they were recording the fam- being the drag families. It was kind of melodrama, blah blah blah, with a little twist, which I'll get to later. Mm-hmm. Um, and no one went home. Everyone was not safe, but no one. There were no bottoms, is what she kind of said. Bruce said, "No Correct. bottoms." I don't agree with that statement because. Technically, if you were the safe two, you were technically the bottoms because you weren't really good enough to be critiqued. So here's here's what I'll say about that, because this is what I think happened very specifically for that episode. I felt this was the episode that made up for Cornbread going home due to medical. Yes. That when I when we reached the end of that particular episode, I was like, okay, this is the makeup episode. Like, and it's not a made up episode. We're not technically making up for anything. We're just allowing space for the fact that a queen would have gone home, but we've already had one go home prematurely. So mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna do a, a double chante and nobody goes home. Fine. Whatever. Yep. Then we got to episode eight, which was the um Girl group group, 60s girl group game, mm-hmm. um, where someone did go home. And yeah, that's that's cool. Um, and then we got to this next episode, the most recent one, which was the panel and all of that stuff. And we got a bottom, we did get a bottom two. Mm-hmm. And spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for the sound effect. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Fired a bit. She ain't paying attention. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, it was a double save. And the winner is... We have a tie! Huh? 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 So, mm. Do I have this? Hold on. Am I going to get into this later? Let me check my not. Let me check my notes. <laughs> Yep, I'm going to get into this later. So, I will talk about that later. Um this this is this is kind of what ran through my head. What the fuck you doing here? <laughs> two queens at her. Two queens lip sync. Nobody goes home. Fuck you, fuck you and fuck you. I what? I what? just have to say. What? 
someone should have gone home, and we both know who it was. Both of them? I went back yeah. and watched it again before before we recorded it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Let's let let. I, so. I will say this. I will say this for the record. For the record. For the record. Before the world like comes for me. Comes at me. Comes for One you. One of them, in my opinion, was better than the other, and I don't think it's who they thought was going to win. The lip sync. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to say it until later. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to hold my thoughts. I'm holding my I'm holding my time, holding my peace. Okay. So, Mr. Gary, how about you? Um so all right, interesting developments. So, like you were already talking about, um this is the most trans season of all the seasons there has been. Uh it is um I don't know what other words to use. Intriguing, interesting, like alluring, uh, very stimulating. Well, yeah, I the, think. Yeah, I think one of the things that I we're learning or have realized is like the show is becoming better over time. Not in regards to like the producing and the production and all that bullshit, but in regards to the sisterhoods that are made with the queens. Um, they are allowed to, you know, despite it being a competition and some queens are kind of a little bit more competitive than others. I'm looking at you, Diabetti. Um, but some of the queens are getting, are being a little bit more like understanding and knowing that we're in this together. We're having this experience right. together. And while we're contestants and competitive and trying to win this title and this money and yada, 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 um, we're still like here and no one else has this experience except for the other queens that have been here. Right. So this is, this is the part where I'm, I'm not sure how I feel because from a, from a bigger perspective, from a blue marble view, we'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. When you're looking down at the whole series, we spent, what, 10, 12 years railing about, like, the anti-trans, like, mm -hmm. perspective of the show. Like, only drag queens, men can be contestants. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada. And then we, we started breaking away from that. And we celebrated Peppermint. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, we, we, we did these things along the way and I'm going to, I'm not going to name everybody because my brain is failing me, but we get to this season and it seems so um, curious to me that it's like a, not a reversal, but it's like, we're watching the coin flip mm -hmm. like in the other direction of like the most in a season. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't think it's being manipulated. I don't think it's intentional. I don't feel that um, World of Wonder and production could have known when they picked this cast for season 14 that we would have this many individuals who were going to identify going in or uh, on the coming out. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I will say this, though, since I was just thinking of it. Season 14, the quality of the queens overall is elevated. Mm -hmm. They're not all Bianca Del Rio's. They're not all, you know, um, Courtney Axe. They're not all like, you know, global stars. Uh -huh. But they have arrived for the most part pretty prepared for challenges. Mm -hmm. No one I think has really kind of uh, fucking it up and falling on their face. Understood. In challenges. Yeah, there's some baubles. It's kind mm -hmm. of to be expected. But there's no disasters. There's no crickets. Uh -huh. Like there's no like, oh girl, no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so Yeah. Um that's what it, it's that's another part of it for me that's an interesting um development. Now uh, I do want to say this. I have to give recognition for this because I was not prepared, so I got gooped by 
Lady Camden, episode seven. Mm-hmm. Her runway entrance. <gasps> oh, yes. Okay, so here's the question between the two of us, girl. Okay, hold did, on, hold did on. Did you did you know? Did you did or did you believe? So, so I'll put. Oh God, how do I? How do I? <sighs> and I'm asking you to go back no. to the moment when you watched. Yes, it. I'm going back to the moment I watched it. Yes. Yes. I what? totally believed it. I so totally I. thought she had fell so and I. hurt herself and done something like, like what the hell is going on? I thought she face planted. Yes. Like, I honestly thought that like she broke her nose. Or something on the on the on the stage, I uh-huh. was freaked out, and yeah. it's so funny because everybody was like, "But they do two takes. Why would they be that shady to her and put the put the whore, put the fall or the whatever in it?" Like that's what people said they were thinking in that moment. Um, and I'm just like, "Well, if 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 she fell and like it was dramatic, right. right? You know what I mean? Like if if she fell and like actually really hurt herself. I mean, not to be. I mean, I'm just saying, right. like." Because if suddenly she's no longer in the episode, <laughs> like, we're going to need to know why. Correct. And this correct. is why. Because bitch fell and busted her ass right. or busted her nose right. um, on the runway and needs to go get seek medical treatment. Right. Like. But. That reveal. Nope. Uh-huh. Gooped. Gooped. Was not ready for the for the, the wig face. Like. Mm-mm. Drop the because she even had like a shawl or a jacket or something like it was it was yeah. it was so well done uh-huh. that she fell looked like she like you know intentionally fell or no didn't intentionally fall like it like it was you know it wasn't a prat fall it wasn't yeah comedic or whatever and yeah. she comes and she does this delayed thing and she knew what she was doing because her body posture was this whole thing when she goes to stand up and her face is the last thing that gets revealed uh-huh. with the Freddie Mercury style mustache and I was uh-huh. like oh you fucking cunt I was like <laughs> what is this I was like that's amazing and and is that, several people have pointed out can never be done again no. Like anybody else who falls on the stage, bitch, nobody go everyone gonna think you must have hurt yourself. Cause if you try that, if you if you wanna be a stunt queen, if you wanna pull that, Mm-mm. you probably can't be can. done. Yeah, you can't cannot be can. done. Yeah, over I or be better. I will own I would yeah, I agree. It just like bitch, like you did you did it. Yeah. You did it. it. <laughs> like yeah. I, I was I was I was I was jaw dropped. And and not only that, like again, you think now, well, it was uh, something was obvious because Lady Camden in Boy has a very like reddish brownish hair. So even if the wig and a, like a wig cap and whatever had kind of completely fallen off, you wouldn't have seen dark hair. True, very but true. None of us were thinking of that in that moment. Right, because we just, saw, we just saw a bitch fall. Right, right, right. Well, because because <laughs> it looked like a fall that you get hurt from. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like she tum like tumbled or something and kind of teetered and then spun mm-hmm. around backwards to the back of yeah. the stage to quickly like do something like. Yeah, no, it was. It was. No. It was a. It was a. Full on. Like. I bet she probably really did do some hurt or damage to herself. Like I'm not, I'm just going to say it like now, mm. but she probably did something. It may not have been as bad as like, like twisting an ankle or something along those lines, but I bet she, she probably did hurt herself. I would love to find out if we have the conversation in the reunion. Like, did you actually hurt yourself in right. that, in that moment? Cause it looked that convincing. It looked that real. If she is a, like stunt genius and just is able to like figure that part out and figured it all out and had like figured, like made a way for it to work. I'm even more gooped because like, go ahead girl. But like, I feel looking at it and looking at it like a couple of times, it was, there was obviously a fall, mm-hmm. but it looked real enough that I was convinced that it was real. Right. If that makes sense. So right. if it wasn't real, mm-hmm. girl, like who who taught you how to do that? 
I don't know. Maybe she's got friends that are stunt people, you know. Maybe. I mean, she is a dancer professionally. You know, she's been trained. Mm -hmm. So I I think that lends to control of your body and knowing what you can do with it. But I'm I'm sitting here talking to you thinking, like, I wonder how many times you rehearsed that in the hotel room. Like mm -hmm. how to how to pull that together to get, you know, to know how the body is going to look and how it's going to work in that moment. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make sure that I definitely recognize that because that was one thing that I was yes. like, yes, girl, I will say this also, and this is like, not something I'm supportive of. Um, so when it comes to the lip sync, I could totally tell that she had painted another mustache under the other mustache. Cause the, cause the first one wasn't staying on. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, in, in camera or something in untucked, like it, it, I was like, I'm like, that was not there on the runway. So that's coming later. Like it was kind of a giveaway, but anyways. Um, mm. Lastly, I wanted to say, um, bite me, bitch. <laughs> and here's why. So there is a look on the runway in episode nine that I think still is a fantastic look. Yes, there is at least one definitive criticism about it that could have been better, but I don't care. And Jiria Van Michaels ma'am 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 if you're gonna come for bob the drag queen's gig you best be ready <laughs> wearing houndstooth on the runway miss paris miss angie i live for that look i i she came around the corner and i was like girl I was like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. I loved the juxtaposition of the two different print patterns. I hear mm -hmm. you, Queens. I hear you. Whenever you do three, you should do three patterns, not two. I hear you. And I hear that the cape was not lined. Be that as it may. I still love that look. I still live for it. I hope that if I get to see her perform that she wears a fucking outfit because I love it. Like it's just, it was so well done, form fitting, executed. Mm -hmm. And she wore a crown. You know what's in our conspiracy crown. theories about queens that wear crowns? Didn't work for Mint Ginger Minge, but that's okay. Do you remember that? Ed Confessional mm -hmm. at All Star, she was wearing that crown all the time, and everybody's like, oh, it's a secret coach. She's going to win. <laughs> no. Um. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I saw yeah. the hound's tooth. I loved the hound's tooth. I was very, very happy and excited about it. Um, yeah. No, it was. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I, nope. like, I, I do like that pattern. Mm hmm. When executed well. Yes. I will cautiously say, like, because I have seen every once in a blue moon a weird, and I'm kind of like, oh, no, that, that does not work, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm Anything kind of else? So for me, uh, if that wasn't clear to everybody, that happens to be a uh, nerve. Like, Mm. Just loved it. And the irony is not lost on me. Poor Angie. She's like, I want to go to the fair. <laughs> we'll come back to that later in a different part here. But the fact that she wears that outfit and what it means in the cake community that she don't know about Folsa, but she wants to go to the fair. So she might learn something. <laughs> Are you ready to move on to our next segment? <laughs> yes, let's. <laughs> All right, honeys, it's time for the snaps and the eye rolls, uh, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, the highs and the lows of these episodes um not one for every single episode unless you have yeah. it uh just <laughs> what we want to give snaps to and what we are eye rolling at so damon yes let's start with you Who, what you give it snaps for so i am actually going to give some snaps to the daytona wind flip okay why i did not see it coming okay so 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 here's the thing so mm -hmm. 
I love the the story. I love the you know kind of the story, whatever the, you know kind of thing. The acting was pretty good all around. I was expecting like a melodrama, which is kind of what they're going for, comedic but still melodramatic kind of thing. Right. It was it was definitely giving me the uh, Dallas Dynasty. Yeah. Um, like tele- like telenovela, to, you know, yeah, like kind of very much that overly yeah. dramatic. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I will, I, oh, I do want to give props to um, Willow and her just vapid, um, uh, her vapid, uh, like daughter, like moment with the little purse and just like the, that voice. I live. Cause again, it is just it was on point. Having said that, we get to the runway, and if I'm not mistaken, let me go back to my notes. Let me look at my notes. Um, okay, so yeah, so they advise that it is like the directorial cut of the Daytona Wind, mm-hmm. and it starts, and you have. Michelle's um, narration in the beginning and then it goes into it and then the first sound comes out Mm -hmm. and then the second one Mm -hmm. and then the next one and everything starts like falling into place Mm -hmm. the words that they're saying the like the all the little subtle references whoever wrote this like whoever you are like Emmy, like not no, not really, but you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like it was again, like subtle, like nuances and some of the way way that words were said, and then they obviously used certain takes because of mm-hmm. whatever. I don't think the queens knew. I agree with you. Uh, like I've I've listened to a couple of kind of recap shows, like you know these talking head type things, like we do, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. pretty much the consensus is across the board is the queens on the day of recording on the stage did not know what was what was up, like why up? why Rue was directing specifically and why they were being directed the way they were. And yeah. I also agree with the notion that it, it was better this way, yeah, because then the queens couldn't act differently or like yeah, try to they, you know give them what they been, couldn't use yeah they would have it would have been a lot more like cheeky for lack of a better phrase <laughs> cheeky fun like they would have when they were in on the joke because they would have gotten it a lot more right right this worked because it allowed them to not be in on a joke and still do these wonderful fun moments that added to it mm-hmm. so i was like Kudos, right? It caught me off guard. Did the farts get a little annoying about uh, in the end? Yes, yes, because it's a fart joke, right? Right. I'm not a I'm not a kid, <laughs> you know. But when it when it's again like when it started happening, I was like, oh gosh, and that's so cool, and it's so well written that it worked so well. So yeah, agreed. That's my props. Good. Our good. snaps. <laughs> Um, I'm going to give snaps to Bosco, educating Ooh. the children's zizzes. <laughs> so this goes back to Miss Angeria wanting to go to the fair. <laughs> this conversation comes up about Folsom, the Folsom mm-hmm. Street Fair, and how it is not a pride parade. It is not a family-friendly event. It is not for the general public. Mm-hmm. And... So, you know, these two particular events, uh, Dory Street Alley and Folsom Street Fair, these events are well known in the um, kink, queer, um, same gender loving kind of community set subsets that, you know, things happen Mm -hmm. on the street. Literally. With spectators. Mm -hmm. And video. On, uh-huh. shot on cell phones. Yeah. Later goes on Twitter. Used to be Tumblr. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and and it's a whole thing. And I was so happy that Bosco, talking head, confessional to camera, gives a teaching moment and says, there is a time and a place. This is not it. 
Do not yeah. bring your children around. And I liked how Monet and Adore Delano have this conversation about how, mm-hmm. like, you know, there, there, there is a context for this. And don't be confusing this with the other stuff. Now, I will say this. I have been to Pride events in some bigger cities where there have been men on leashes. Mm-hmm. There have been pups. Yeah. Monet, yeah. check yourself. Because I don't think maybe you've paid attention because you were probably, you know, on a a float or on a car Mm -hmm, and you're not mm -hmm. near the leather group to know that that might be visible. Mm -hmm. It is, though, it is, again, so yes, agreed. Like it is, it is a part of, kink is a part of pride. End of story. (laughs) End of story. Point blank period. (laughs) (laughs) So for for the for the listening audience, there's a a, a finger wag <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> Period. Thank you. <laughs> but Dory Street Alley and Folsom Street Fair are not Pride festivals. Mm-hmm. No, they are they are prideful. Well, they are I'm sure they are kink celebrations. Yeah, they are celebrations of kink. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, but they are not a family friendly moment. Like the kink at Pride is relatively tame. <laughs> I thought you were going to say watered down for a moment there. <laughs> I think I almost did. Uh, but relatively tame. Yeah. In comparison to, say, a Folsom Street Fair or a Dory Alley. Right. Having said that, you know, don't 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 go to Pride and be surprised if you see like a man on a leash or some leather chaps or someone in um, a harness or a pup hood kind of walking around with like the regular with the you know general clientele. Right. It, it is interesting to me. So like um, kind of as a cultural example, I live near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and this year I think they're going to have three prides that for many, many, many years, there was only a single pride. Um, the organization that did that, who shall not be named, um, had some significant problems in its uh, executive board, including the person that was leading it. And there was uh, some like uh, legal issues and lawsuit. And anyways, so that group is dissolved and is no longer around. Mm-hmm. So now we have, I think this year, there's going to be three prides. I think there's going to be the progressive pride, the revolution or revolutionary pride. And I think it's pride on the point. So anyways, there's going to be multiple prides. And over the past decade, I've definitely seen this discussion, this concern about the corporatization mm. um, of pride and how these very large, well-funded businesses, corporations come in and they want to have their name plastered on the pride. But coming with that as a whole, like, you get more money, you get to be bigger, you bring bigger crowds. And then, you know, some people really feel that moves away from where pride comes from. You know, people Mm. point back to the Mattachine Society, to, you know, the Daughters of Belitis, to Stonewall, like, to the origins in the U.S. of the gay liberation movement and how we, you know, we held prides when our lives were gravely in danger. Mm-hmm. And so there, there is this conflict in, like, the progress that has been made and yet your authentic self being represented. And part of that conversation has been whether or not we should have more than one pride. Pride where kids are welcome. Bring your little ones. If you're a lovely, you know, 2.5, you know, <laughs> Person, Mary, household, yes, right, with household, dog, not, account, maybe not married. Right, yeah. picket fence, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, there's a pride for that. But then there's also a pride where you can be your authentic self. And so if you are a furry, if you are, you know, a kinkster, if you are, you know, um, femme trans queer, if you are, you know, like you can represent yourself this way and, you know, if you're going to let the, you know, your freak flag fly, that there's not judgment or, you know, all this consternation about, oh, we can't have oh, that. My. You know, there might be, you know, four-year-olds present. And it, it starts this whole fight because then it's like, well, why are the four-year-olds there? And, you know, uh-huh. kind of like, so my feeling really on it is like, you know, not everything is for everybody. No. 
And that's just what it comes down to. So I appreciated that Bosco put that on an international platform yes. of entertainment to say not everything is a pride event for your family. No. And that's the way that is. And this is not. No. So, Blossom is not. Not. It also makes me wonder how much Bosco knows about. Well, that was what I was kind of looking out <laughs> um, at. I kind of wanted to figure out because I think, come on, open up for me. Thank you. Now I've got to redirect, go to the thing, load it up, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, 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 nope, that's last season. <laughs> I need to update that link. <laughs> um, Bosco's from Seattle. Okay, right. I was trying to think. I thought there was a queen in, that was from San Francisco, but I guess I was wrong. This season? Yeah, this season. Um, but there's not. There's not. No, Deja's from, Deja's Fresno, from Fresno, but that's, that's not the same thing. No, no, it is not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camden. Oh, that's right. She lives in San Francisco. I mean, she's originally British, but she is considered uh, from San Francisco. Ah, uh, no, Sacramento. What? I have San Francisco. Maybe I'm looking at I'm looking at the wiki. I'm not looking at the fan wiki. Oh, okay. See, sources can't even necessarily be on the same page. Y'all getting on my nerves with this shit. Come on. Yeah. Oh come on. But, but Seattle is a more progressive, forward, yes, kind yeah. of rad, radical kind of city and community. So Agreed. it just makes sense that Bosco would would be aware. But still, I'm like. Hmm. Makes me wonder if Bosco's been to the fair. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't be the first queen. <laughs> she would Agreed. not be the first. Agreed. So, with that, are we ready for eye rolls? Let's do it. Okay. This, this <laughs> girl. <laughs> uh, who are you giving eye rolls to? <laughs> so. Pull my hair back. Um, <laughs> so this kind of goes in two directions for a couple of people. Okay. And it's it's very simple. How many passes are we going to give her? And this falls down to kind of really two queens in particular. And they are? Jasmine Kennedy. <laughs> and Georges. Wait, wait, wait. And the winner is, <laughs> we have a tie. <laughs> so, <gasps> yes. Um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna, okay. Well, I rolls and I'm, I'm among company. I'm, I'm among good company. So, um, so Jasmine, has been in the bottom mm -hmm. three times. Mm -hmm. Counting this last episode. Mm -hmm. Thrice. Mm -hmm. We know what that means. There are very few queens who have made it that long, mm -hmm. made it that often in the bottom and, and kept going. Right. I watched this um, lip sync. I wanted to watch it again before tonight's episode, but didn't get a chance to. So I'm just going on my memory. Um, I think Georges won that lip sync. I agree. When I said earlier that I felt that there was one queen who performed better in one compared to the other, mm -hmm. and I said it wasn't who people probably thought it would have been, that's what I mean. I think yeah. people felt that Jasmine, as a dancer, would have done better with this number. But this last number really needed more of the comedy, I feel. Uh-huh. Than it needed it needed dance. more of a performance. It needed a overall like portrayal. So and I think George just got it down a lot better than than she did. Right. Having said that, though, um, George is saying ain't, ain't out of the out of the carpet yet either. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Um, 
I was not impressed with her during this last episode. I don't know what she w- what was going on with that wig and that crusty ass like um, wig line and baby hair. Whatever. I don't know what the fuck that was. Um, no, don't ever do that again. Like I don't know who told you to do that. Don't don't ever <laughs> do it again. It looked awful. Hmm. And that 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 shirt, that big ass billowy sleeve shirt with these like cuffs that I guess were you know it. Mm, mm, mm. No, don't no. All of that that you had on. No, you didn't look anything like yourself. Like I didn't know that that's not George, that was not the Georges I've seen. Granted, you could have just put on a bra and panties, but you know, still, like it is. Like she always does. I was, yeah, that's what I mean. But like, it, like again, like there was. That was not Georges. That was someone pretending to be Georges. I don't know, mm. whatever. Anyway, it just didn't work for me. And. But again, I'm, you know, we've all, we talked about this, I think, last episode. You're definitely the, like, RuPaul's pet. Um, RuPaul kind of loves you. And you can do little to no wrong in her eyes. I think this episode was a little bit of that crack kind of showing. Mm. Um, but uh, I don't think you're going to get to the end. Right. Um, you're kind of floundering at this point. You're now in danger because you've been in the bottom twice. Jasmine's been in the bottom three times. Um, so I have a feeling y'all are kind of the next ones to go. Um, That's fair. Also, also Jasmine, um, honey, 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 you are 20 something years old. I need you to stop painting like you're 40. Or 50. I just need you to stop. I don't know where you're getting this from. I don't know if you were like the biggest fan of Alyssa Edwards and you're just like trying to copy her look because that's what you know. I don't know. I don't know who your drag mother is, but somewhere along the lines, you got it in this head that you could, you're supposed to pay older and you're not. Mm. Like your runway look tonight was the youngest you've ever looked. On the ninth, this ninth episode. Right, right. Um, also, also, Jasmine, um, this is your real hair. This is a wig. <laughs> I can tell the difference. Are you sure? Yes. Because she said nobody could tell. That it was a wig. Mama. No. (laughs) No. Oh, oh my God. No. When she said that, I was like, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Delusion. (laughs) What the hell? Girl. Yes. She mm. she may be un, un, unbeknownst to her, she may be related to Alyssa Edwards. She may just be living the Black Swan fantasy. She may mm-hmm. just f- really feel right. She may just yes. really feel that you know she mm. like she she knows better than everybody else. Mm. Okay, girl, if you want to okay. join the Valentina Club, you want to live in your own fantasy. fantasy. Uh huh. If you want to live in your vanilla latte fantasy, <laughs> then you go right on ahead. But ma'am, I uh Yeah. I just when when they, they saved them both, mm. I was uh, it okay, fine. It did not feel right to me. Yeah. I was annoyed. I was yeah. like, really? Okay. Like it just felt like this is this felt like we need to have so many episodes a season, so we're gonna keep we're gonna just kind of do mm-hmm. this moment at this moment. Right. And and that's the thing for me is so episode seven, I think you and I agree, that double Shantae felt natural. And and it mm-hmm. made sense in the 
nobody goes home. I called it double Shantae, I just realized it's kind of not. Um, anyways, like it, it just because of the cornbread thing at the time, at that moment, I was like, oh, okay, we're we need to not send somebody home because we had someone leave early, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Then we get to this latest episode and two queens are safe, and I was like, excuse me? Now, I will say this, because I was so amused. Have you watched um Bob the Drag Queen's recaps at all? No. So Bob the Drag Queen is doing on their own YouTube channel recaps with other Rue girls. And this week was Manila Luzon. Mm. Honey, it was so funny listening to the two of them talk about this thing. And they're they're part of that veteran camp. They're like, send a bitch home. It's a competition. Like, you know, I mean, you know, a, a lot a lot of queens have been saying that about these, like, you know, saves or whatever. Mm-hmm. But even yeah. then, woo, honey, I think the NDA is gone. Because both of them were like, you can't tell me production isn't fucking with the chocolate bars. Like, everybody is not buying this conspiracy thing about that. Um, Speaking of which, do you have available? Yes. Hold on. Oop, I gotta get up. (laughs) Boop. Oh. So as a surprise to our viewers uh, and, well, listeners, you'll understand in a second, both David and I happen to be in the possession of one said RuPaul chocolate bar. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. So when we get to that episode, we're going to open our chocolate bars. And we're oh. going to see if we have a gold foil wrapper. <gasps> because... That's how you're supposed to know, right? Like, you're, you get a gold bar. Oh. And supposedly, you know, they wrote their names on the bars. But as as Bob or, and or Manila both of them pointed out, you give them back to production. Yeah, they didn't keep them. Right. So who's to know? Vanilla. It's a vanilla. Whoops. Sorry. Whoop. Manila actually said, I would have taken it. I would have taken it. I would have put it in. My my makeup bag. I would have taken it back to the hotel room. She actually cracked my ass up because she said I would have opened it right there. I would have thrown the whole show off and been like, <sighs> and just ripped it open, mm-hmm. <laughs> just to show. And then of course you know, Bob's like, and magically you disappear from the show. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, but like I right I so one of the things that someone has mentioned, um, the bars aren't really chocolate. Yes, they it's are probably prop just like plastic, prop, apparently. Prop plastic chocolate or prop plastic gold. Because the way that they're doing it is just the actual bar itself. So they're not in these wonderful, like, boxes. Right. And these are gonna... also a smaller size, notably. Yes. These yes. are the real RuPaul chocolate candy bars. For those of you that don't know, um, if you go to chocolab.com, not a sponsor, um, you get a full quarter pound of fine chocolate, and there are, I think, four varieties of these. And Damon and I got the 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 matching red one for this season, because this is what they're supposedly opening on there. But you could tell by my hand size. Look, Mom, I'm a hand model now. Um, uh-huh. That these are much smaller than the ones that they're using on the show. Correct. Uh, to open and to look at. So yeah. yes. they're also in like a box as opposed to like a wrapper. There's probably a wrapper actually here. So I also have, so Gary, so Gary sent this to me <laughs> and I got a random, like I got a random package in the mail and I was like, what the hell is this? I don't know what this is. And I opened it up and there's these chocolate bars. And my first thought was, did I order these and forget? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> it's unfortunately um if you watch the regular show um i was um com- i competed in north american pet and i was online a lot looking at shit and buying shit like left and right because i needed it for the contest <laughs> and i remembered looking at these bars i think someone in like twitter or something had posted about them mm-hmm. and it was like oh those are really nice but I don't recall, I didn't recall in my head actually buying them. Right. But then they showed up at my door mm-hmm. and I was like, did I? Right. So, but no, I didn't. 
I didn't. Um, but I have this one, which is yes, in and it is the dark chocolate almond hazelnut spread and cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Bitch, um, mm-hmm. I've been off on opening it because you have better I, self-control than i do girl yeah i, I will admit i, I did put- mine i'm just gonna own it i'm gonna confess <laughs> right here and now the day that bitch arrived i was like the red one is for the show and the red the, the other one is to eat so i've already tasted out now to be fair so everybody knows out there these chocolate bars again not a sponsor not a promotion these chocolate bars were released three years ago two years ago rupaul did a whole pop-up shop and like there was this whole thing so the fact that the chocolate bars appeared in this season was not a big surprise to me because it wasn't like oh now she she thinks she really walk up in this shit and doing all these things <laughs> i was like oh this is interesting how they're like re uh introducing a previous mm-hmm. product line Blah, blah, blah. So I went to the website because I was curious because I thought the red bar had existed before, but I couldn't quite recall. Now, the one that Damon was just showing, that blue green um, particular one, that one I remember the flavor profile for. They are pretty all unique. um, And there's like, I think, four altogether in the collection. And I think there are three uh, that are a little bit more hype marketed. And then there's the red one. And the red one... Um, I think they, they redid the design a little bit to make it more like what's being shown on the show without mm-hmm. really, um, revealing it, but mm. yes. So, but, uh, so everyone can see there's a gold wrapper. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'll probably have a little bit of this, um, later. I won't eat it right now. That's, that's just rude. <laughs> um, but I, will own so that gary that feels a little better i literally almost tore into this the first time i got it like almost well there was a reason girl i got you too because i thought <laughs> if she can't help herself i'm gonna give her the one that she can eat and the one that's meant for the show uh-huh. so that way you wouldn't feel bad and, and what ended up happening is i opened them up um i put them off to the side because i was in my in my office and i set them on the side they kind of sat there in the in the still in the wrap in the packaging that you mailed it in, and I was like, I kept looking over and I was like, Do I really want these? <laughs> God, I could use some chocolate right now. I was like, Nope, don't. You know what? Don't. So I I like at my lunch break while I was working, I grabbed both of them, mm-hmm. and moved them to up here. Okay. And I was like. Quote unquote, out of sight, out of mind, or not right, really out of right, sight. I literally right. can look at it, but um, I, I I have thought about it a couple of times mm-hmm. to just like open the fucker and eat it. But well, now you know. I'm very proud of you. But if you wanted to, yes, the 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 uh, bluish green, the red one. Yes, yeah, the, the red one is for 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 real. The prop that we're gonna use here later. Yes, the, the green the, one for the reveal. <laughs> <laughs> so yes uh that has been going on all season long the i don't have any sound clips of it maybe i'll do it everyone is talking about how they want the super cut of all the queens saying it's, it's chocolate, chocolate. Which, oh, come on right right and, and why they're using that particular sound effect i'm not really sure because it would probably be better if they went this way <laughs> But instead of the comedic one, they're doing this really weird. Yeah. As someone pointed out at the very beginning, they're using the sound effect from the movie Saw. It's messy. I have no idea why that is the case. But yeah, there's this weird buzz saw thing that they're using when they reveal that it's just chocolate. So it's chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's more like a murder train kind of sound. It's very, very <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Anything else in regards to your eye rolls about giving these these queens no. passes? No, I'm right. good. I'm bad. Um, so for me, um, I have one particular thing. What the frock? Runway looks children. Oh. I'm going to start with George's. She only has one. She only has one out of these three episodes as an infraction. Mama. They are not chaps. 
They never were chaps. They never will be chaps. Not in a million years. And if anybody told you that they were chaps, they was delusional. And you should never talk to them again. In fact, you can block them on all platforms. Yes, those were not chaps. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Not, not in and, a million years in a Victoria's Secret fantasy. Not going to happen. Yeah. And to kind of caveat this one, I know you only mentioned the chaps, but honey, those aren't shoulder pads. Those will never be shoulder pads. That's true. That's true. Yes. <laughs> I don't care who told you that those are shoulder pads. They are not. Because you literally have cutouts at the shoulder. Like... <laughs> Like, as he came walking down this runway for shoulder pads, and I saw this, like, cut out there, and I'm like, what, 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 are, we, what are we doing? Yeah. Are you going to put something in there? Like, because you got a little slit, and you can just, like, pop it in there at the, at the, at the bottom of the runway? Mm. Are you going to take your not where you didn't have, you know, cutlets? <laughs> like... At that point, where are you going to take those? And just like if you had done that, right? I might have actually been kind of cute and funny, and I would have been like, "Oh, there you go." But you didn't, right? And you kind of walk this way, a la like, a, you know, a marching band person or whatever. Like, ha 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 ha! Like I've got these big old puffy sleeves. Right, she's got puffy shoulders, not shoulder pads. No. They weren't even puffy shoulders. Puffy sleeve. Puffy sleeve. <laughs> oh, girl. Um, also, Miss Carrie Colby. Child. Child. I'm starting to wonder if she gave up. <laughs> Hear me out. Uh-oh. The last episode that she was in, I really felt like she wasn't in it mentally mm. I, do, I didn't feel like she was really in it mentally so today when I was going back and watching um, some I started thinking are we pulling a Willem are we intentionally trying to get out of the race by not mm. like really competing in the race because mm. she just it's like she was doing so decently well slash good sometimes great that she just kind of fell it was weird to me i didn't mm -hmm. understand what was happening so uh hair on the runway uh i'm sorry monet got it best you got mange girl uh that outfit i hated oh, it the ch oh the chaps yes yeah i was like that is not chaps i don't know what that is um, you are not even trying to serve like Wookie hooker realness. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 and no. Hated it. Now the hair on her head, the braids, 90 yes. inch to the floor. Yes, yes. Mama, that was great. The scantily put had... together tracks into a whatever that thing was. No, 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 <laughs> no. And she had all that no. hair. And then in Untucked, she had to, like, wrap it around her, like, arm <laughs> in order to sit there on, on the couch. Those braids were long. And it was beautiful. Yeah. But um, um, where, what, what, what is this? What are you wearing? What, what honey, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, I wasn't, I didn't hate it as much as you did. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like. Mm, no, it's yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a no for me. Yeah, no, I was it was I I did not like it. So that's uh what episode seven, and mm -hmm. then we get to episode eight, and it's hearts on the runway, and yep. she comes out. And honestly, at first look, I was like, whoa. Yeah. And then a second later, I was like, bitch, your heart is on the wrong side. I was like, do you not know anatomy? At all? In that body? Girl. <clears throat> so that was a bother. So that was yeah. a points deduction. Oh. <laughs> this... And then, 
And then, like, it just, uh, you know, the panty thing and, like, the fishnet thing and the, uh, uh, like, uh, like I was like, okay, I get kind of where you were going with it. I didn't understand the horns. That was also another thing that was confusing. Well, okay, so I think girl, girl, that girl, was girl, supposed girl, girl. to be a heart that fell. I don't, y'all don't quote me. Okay. But I feel like it was meant to be this heart moment that just did not work. It didn't work whether it was horns or a heart. Neither of them worked. Just putting it out there. But I was just thinking that maybe it was supposed to be a heart as opposed to horns. Okay. Whatever it was supposed to be, right. neither of them worked. <laughs> right. The whole thing just didn't work. Yeah. Like, it, it looked was, off. It was two weeks of bad runway presentations where I think you were relying way too much on that body, yaddy, yaddy, and your beauty to carry you through. And I was like, uh, no, you should have you should have been like eliminated before we were eliminated. Sorry. Like, I just mm -hmm. I don't. And especially in that in the the Rue girl groups episode. I felt like she, like, I just don't, she was off. There was something and she decided she wanted to take it churchy. And yeah. that's not what she needed. Now, I, I do understand um, if you watch the, the. What's your packing? What's your packing? Yeah. It was a really good episode oh, of, yeah. of that series where Carrie talks about her past and her stuff. And Michelle says, I wish I had known what I'm learning now. Because it would make more sense about some of the things that happened and like sort of the decisions. And I don't mm -hmm. think Michelle was giving her a pass on why she didn't really know the girl groups or, or mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of stuff. Because um, it sounds from the it, that Carrie is estranged mostly from her family and that it was very religious, very spiritual and was very protective and so pop culture and like the arts and a lot of this stuff was just not something that, that she grew up with. And mm -hmm. so she has a very limited library to pull from of reference and understanding. So when you take that into account, it can maybe make sense as to why she performed the way she did in the, in the girl group. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't appropriate for the Rupremes. Um, I don't know. Like, I just, that whole episode was off for me, and, like, watching her on stage, and I was just kind of like, okay, I don't think this is going to work. And then she didn't do that well in the lip sync, either. No. I was like, I... I just uh, needed something more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was like, just I'm like... Like, I'm trying to pull up her heart on look, and I'm trying to look at this. The, these looks, um, though, I was like, children. Like, it almost made me wonder, because there was so much variety in the shoulder pad uh runway i'm beginning to wonder what they were given as the theme mm. because people are are kind of uh divided on bosco and i'm just going to say this now uh because this isn't really i guess this is an eye roll i don't think bosco should have won i think Daisha should have won mm. Mm -hmm. she did really great with the panel um mm -hmm. And her panel overall was really good. Right. A lot better than the and, other one. And, 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 and of all the bitches that had shoulder pads on the runway, she has to walk sideways shoulders. to go through a door. Hello. <laughs> she had shoulder pads. Like, like, I agree. I don't think I have been like, I, 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 again, I really wanted to watch the episode all the way again through all the way through again. To kind of like see what was going on. I looked at the runway um, and I watched um, Pit Stop and all of that. And I'm just looking at her. And do I like the outfit overall? No, I don't particularly care for it. I wish she had gotten rid of that hat or put it in the back of that up dude kind of thing that she had. Mm -hmm. It being on the side and kind of it was kind of floppy. No. Mm -hmm. um, but again, understood the assignment. Like absolutely, these right. huge right. ass, over accentuated shoulder pads in this nice white, maybe off white, like suit. The skirt could have been. I think they talked about this in in, in um, pit stop. Yeah, I would have preferred the skirt to have been tighter to her 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 body. A little more fitted, yeah. Yeah, a little more fitted to the body. That would have given that 
that triangle moment mm -hmm. um, that would have worked really well. But other than that, it was really, really good. She looked good. Way Her better was than on. the previous mm -hmm. runway. Like leaps and bounds ahead of the Oh agreed. The latex. Yeah. And I just look. <laughs> and I just think it should have been I just feel like she did much better in regards to the moderator assignment. Right. Like, and I'm not taking anything for, away from Bosco. Bosco was an amazing moderator. Mm -hmm. um, she really had the perfect segues and she used humor. And so she had that, that really well done. But I don't, I really felt this was Deja's week. And mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell happened there. Falling short kind of sucks. Yeah. All right. So anything else before we wrap? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we are now halfway through the season. Uh, 14 queens. Um, only six have gone home or are no longer there. We have eight remaining. And and we have officially announced next week it's Snatch Game. Yes. With eight. Mm-hmm. It is normally an odd number. It mm -hmm. is nine. It is seven. But it is eight. Even even uh, Willem said in uh, the Race Chaser episode, not this most recent one, but I think the one before that was kind of like because I think they were she was talking with Trinity. Alaska was away, um, and she said they never do it with even. It's always odd. So I guess we're waiting another two weeks or something. And so I just remember that very distinctly. And I'm like, oh well, guess we're doing with an even number. Mm. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out this next week. Yeah. So, yeah, um, out of the queens that are left, I really feel uh, we're looking at Bosco, Angeria, and Willow, and Lady Camden. I think those, mm. are, I think those are my top four. I think Georges, Jasmine, and Deja, unfortunately, um, are not going to go very far. Or Daya? Daya is possibly our dark horse of the season. Okay. Because everyone's been talking about her edits for so much, how she's just like bitching, 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 bitching. Mm -hmm. And yet I keep seeing previous Rue girls talk about how much they love that she is sticking to her guns and her principle, that it is a competition and she is mm -hmm. not giving up anything. Correct. So there's, I was, I... There's, there's a part of me that wonders if she's going to make it to the top and – you know how how the how the audience will feel about that her going into the, to the final, but yeah, I don't know. I look at this group of queens and who's left, mm -hmm. and I think I agree with you. I think it's Bosco, Di uh, Bosco, Willow, Angeria, Lady Camden. I feel like that's going to be a really good solid top four. Top five. Um, oh, top four, yeah. Top four, yeah. Uh, the only one I could see potentially being "quote unquote" in danger is Lady Camden. Um, I think we need a little bit more from her because she might be outshined by like a Daya or a Deja. Um, so if she's and if she's on a good track, or she was um, this last episode, not just last episode, episode. Uh, Whenever she did the fall, seven, eight, whatever it was. Chaps on the one by seven, yeah. Um, but I could see it being an easy way to push her out. I, I hate to say this, but I really feel amongst all these queens um, that we're talk, kind of talking about top four, top five, I think any of them can falter. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a little nervous because I really feel like Angeria could, could have a bad week willow mm -hmm. could have a bad week um you know and and uh bosco maybe could have a bad week uh so i'm just i'm like mm. yeah there's I'm there's the potential for a there's a potential for a bad week making things go completely out of order and as we know snatch game is probably the one episode that really measures you 
on preparedness. Like, um, it's, it's, uh, it's ad lib. It's, Uh um, help me. Uh, improv. Thank you. It's improv. It's wit. It's humor. It's characterization. It's preparation. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've got to have like those like six or seven things ready. Um, And if you don't have those things, then it could possibly not go well. Yeah. Um, Like I will, I have, I'm I'm just had a vision. Um, I do not see George just doing well in this unless he has a character like that is that, that could, she can pull out of her ass and make something amazing then there she goes. Um, I don't see Jasmine doing well in this. I could be wrong, but this is just me, my opinion. Um, Unless she's doing Alyssa Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, I don't think that's allowed anymore. I don't know. I heard, I thought there was an of... online rumor that the girls can no longer do other Rue girls and they can't do the judges or Rue. I, I thought that mm. was a thing that came about that there's a now there's a, a certain like production boundary. Mm. I don't know. Interesting. If there is, then so be it, you know. Yeah. Um, she would have to come up with someone else. I mean, and even if she did, Alyssa, um, I need more than what I think she could give. Mm. Yeah. Um yeah. I can see this could be this this like you said I agree like this is the episode this will be the episode where we kind of separate the wheat from the chaff as it were like we're gonna see some people rise and I can feel that being a thing and we're gonna see some people like crash and burn and it could be anyone right and the thing is is we really as we were just discussing we have three more queens that we feel are probably gonna be the next eliminated. Mm-hmm. And then it really the competition gets super hot because we end up with the top five, mm-hmm. and who's who's going to make it into the four? Is it going to be a top four traditional? Or are we going to go back to a three? Mm. Could we? Could they really shake it up and go to a top two? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's all up in the air. We'll yeah. find out. Yes. In the meantime, if you would like to get in touch with us, there are plenty of ways to do that. First of which, you can go to our blog website, CubsOutLoud.com. Very simple. Uh, You can comment on a post on there. Or uh, you could also send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. If you want to leave us a voicemail message, we would be happy to play it on the show. Uh, You can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. On the social media platforms, if you're looking for us, type in one word, Cubs Out Loud. You may find us there. Um, And feel free to comment or, you know, uh, subscribe, like, follow, all that jazz. If you would like to join our Entourage chat on Telegram, Um, where we have discussions about everything that is the RuPaul's Drag Race universe, including the current season, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R. If you want to know kind of what's happening with us uh, on a calendar of when we're uh, live on YouTube for our regular series, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar dash col if you would like to support us there's several ways to do that you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud to purchase items like damon is showing that we have our drag pride uh version of the consent is my foreplay t-shirt which has the lovely blue pink and white colors with a crown on it um you could also get other uh items just apparel you could get merch um i happen to have a lovely frosted uh coffee mug here with the cubs out loud drag race logo on it or as damon's showing off right now you could also get it in a different version that's called the two-tone um, which happens to be white with a matching interior and handle which happens to be pink um, <laughs> in this case so uh there's several different items on there and uh in addition to that, you can become a patron. Yes, childrens, we have a Patreon. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for just a dollar a month or more, depending on your level, you can become a patron of Cubs Out Loud. And this month is our four-year anniversary of being uh, on Patreon. And we thank very much all of our patrons who and this month are going to be getting little rewards in the mail. Some of them are getting t-shirts. Some of them are getting gift cards. Some of them are getting a uh, little like uh, stuff sticker thank you type items from us. Uh, So that'll be uh, coming up very soon. 
<laughs> David. <laughs> oh. I know you can't hear me. I just realized that after I said it. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing. I was like, <laughs> girl. <laughs> Um, if you would also, if you just want to, you know, give us the money, honey, there is a great way to do it. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can tip the girls, your hosts. You could just like, you know, give us a little coin. We would be happy to uh, take your tip as a one time uh, donation. All the costs go towards us, you know, keeping the lights on, as we say. Uh, we basically, the Patreon has given us the ability to pay for the web um, ability for hosting and the domain every two years. Uh, thank you very much. As Jeff, our, uh, you know, uh, birth of Cubs Out Loud and producer, um, he has paid for it for many years. So um, that is a way that we were doing that. And we did some equipment upgrades, those kind of things. So thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, also, you can help promote Cubs Out Loud on whatever platform you catch our audio feed of the podcast. You can rate us, uh, you know, five stars. Thank you very much is what we would like. And, you know, very nice comments. Um, obviously, we're on iTunes uh, as the main platform, as well as the other one, Google Play Podcast. So you can subscribe there. Uh, if you want to follow us on YouTube, you can. It is everything comes out loud there. Uh, but if you're interested just in the drag race, we do have an audio feed explicitly for that. Damon, if people want to follow you online, where would they find you? Well, if you wish to get in touch with me, and you know you want to, you can find me at theatercub79. That's the T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. So true. If you would like to be find me, uh, I'm pretty much anywhere online as Gabriel73. However, for drag specifically, I made a different Twitter handle, which is Gabriel73 drag that's g-a-r-b-e-a-r 73 d-r-a-g that way uh i can kind of sequester all the drag stuff and not get spoiled on things um as they come up and with that uh thank you for joining us for episode three of our drag race uh discussion of season 14 uh and we'll be back in a couple of weeks to discuss the next couple of episodes mm -hmm. ciao for now bye